Yesterday, they dropped the first gameplay footage we got to see of BO6 zombies, as well as a bunch of other information about the mode. And I absolutely cannot wait to get my hands on this game. So to hold me over, we'll be playing a bit of Cold War today while we talk about some of the BO6 news. And I get to see just how washed I am at round base, because I have not played this in a bit. What's going on, Rabinoff? Nice to see you. Now, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and warn you, Rabinoff. You're going to have a child here soon. You stay away from Dr. Gray and Maxis. Well, I'm sure most of you guys have already seen the gameplay footage. They put out a whole, like, 17 minutes full of just gameplay footage on Terminus, the new map. So I'm not going to go through and show you guys that, but it did look amazing. It just looked beautiful. I cannot wait to hop on there. It literally, it's just like Cold War. Like visually, it has a lot of the same features, but from the sounds of everything they're adding in, it's just going to be Cold War, but a bit more difficult, which honestly, it's something Cold War probably needs. Oh my Lanta, we don't need more Peck though, and that's for sure happening in the next game, unfortunately, or well, at least unfortunately for Peck, because I'm going to make it my mission to somehow infiltrate the devs and make it so I can get my hands on Peck. Especially now that we have the new like melee macchiato perk, which it's been revealed what it does. And you can basically just pack a punch your fists. Like we've been asking for something like this for a while. It's something like very, very dumb. You know, always like a joke question I get in my streams. But now as a reality, the, the perk machine looks really cool. It's got like two boxing hands on it, like some Rock'em Sock'em robots. And the machine kind of works similarly how Mule Kick does in this game, where the perk machine is almost like a trap where all like the guns go off on it. But for the melee macchiato, the little arms on it with the boxing gloves will hit zombies out of the way, which is pretty cool. I always think it's... It's fun when they do a little something like that for the perk machines. But on top of the perk giving you the ability to actually just punch zombies on, I'm assuming, any round and doing a good amount of damage to them. It's also going to upgrade your melee damage in general. And for the next Black Ops game, apparently we're getting a just specific melee slot. Like where you could just have a melee weapon on you at all times and just two other weapons. So you basically get to spawn in with Mule Kick. And speaking of Mule Kick, I don't know if it's actually going to be in BO6. At least in the little blog post I put out, they didn't mention anything about Mule Kick. They also didn't say anything about, like, Tombstone and Death Perception either. Which, I mean, isn't the biggest deal, I don't think. I, I think I really only use Mule Kick in this game for all the added benefits it gave you with, like, in terms of ammo drops and being able to get more lethals and tacticals after each use. But Death Perception was really cool. I like Death Perception a lot. But maybe they'll just add some of those features into Gobblegums instead. Also, shut up, Peck. Are you going to talk here? No, you're not. I also missed the rail, and I went down the wrong one. Oh, Mimic. Stay back. But while we're on the topic of things not coming back, I'm almost positive that we are not getting any rebuildable barriers. Moving at a bit of a snail's oh, shut today, up. We? Chop, chop, guys. I still Fuck have you. Shut your mouth. But from when they put out showing all the power-ups in zombies, we're not getting Carpenter, which honestly don't matter a whole lot because it basically is just like max armor or full armor, whatever the uh, perk or power up is called. Cause I don't really care about repairing barricades. The only time you actually do it is like very early round just to get a little extra points. They don't really do a whole lot. And whenever you got Carpenter in this game, it was just basically to repair the armor that you had. Now grind the rail. Oh, I missed it. Hold on one more time. There we go, clean. But the most heartbreaking thing about BO6 that we're not gonna be getting, or at least it looks like it's not gonna be there at launch, is Ring of Fire. Going through all the field upgrades, I didn't see any sight of Ring of Fire, and it's just, it's really sad, because that's like the one field upgrade I use the most in this game. I got Tesla Storm on right now, because I like using this in the earlier rounds. It, it helps a lot more when I'm actually like moving around. But once I get set up, Ring of Fire is definitely the better option. And I'm thinking it might be because it's going to be replaced by some gobble gums like stock option or, or something similar to that. And I kind of got the feeling they were moving away from Ring of Fire in MW3 zombies. Not only because it was more open world and I don't think you really need to be using Ring of Fire out there, even though it would be fun. But also because they added in the Mag of Holding, where it just basically takes from your stock anyways. And you get to use that for the whole match, which I guess is... I mean, it, it's good, but I really like the damage increase that Ring of Fire gives you. So I guess we're gonna have to find our new favorite field upgrade. Isn't that right, Rabinoff? And let's also go ahead and pack a punch. Oh, I, I forget that there's a menu here. But it looks like in BO6, we're not gonna have a menu for pack a punch, which is nice. It's probably gonna work similar to, similarly to MW3, where you just walk up and, you know, whatever weapon you have out, you tap the pack a punch machine and it immediately pack a punches it, which honestly is better. I, I feel like the only thing that is gonna suck about it is that you don't get to pick what ammo mine you get unless it like drops on the ground because i'm still not entirely sure how we're gonna be able to get like whatever ammo mod in zombies next year 
or in the next two months. It might be similar to like older games where you just have to pack a punch multiple times and it'll like reroll for like 2,500 and give you a random ammo mod, which isn't the most optimal, but I mean, it's not that big of a deal. But a change I'm really liking is it looks like the arsenal, like right here that I'm at right now, you aren't gonna have to go up to it, open up a whole menu just to upgrade your armor. It looks like armor is going to be wall buys, actually. So you can just walk up, press it, and you're all good. No menu. I'm just hoping that it's not as, like, prevalent as ammo boxes like this, where there's, like, maybe one, two, three areas where you can go restock your armor at, but not too many of them around the map to make it so, like, refilling your armor is, like, I don't know, more of a, a nuisance, more of a, a task to get done, especially on how much of a necessity armor is in this game to staying alive. Because if it is, then I think I might heavily lean on Frenzied Guard just to be able to get my armor back without having to go like all the way out of like whatever spot I'm holed up at. If it's even possible to, to camp in high round in that game. And I know a whole lot of people aren't the biggest fans of camping, but I still feel like it's a valid it's strat for high rounding. It's it's more palatable to me, I guess, where instead of just like running around in like a circle the whole time, you get to stay in one spot and shoot into an area. And a whole lot of the strat is just timing when to use certain weapons and upgrades and things like that. But on the bright side, we will be able to save and quit out of solo games, which is absolutely amazing. I feel like I'm going to try to go for a lot more high rounds than I would normally go for because I don't have to sit there for eight hours or whatever to try to get to the highest round I want to get to. So that's like the biggest roadblock for me in going for a high round is just it takes so much time. But if I, if I got time to like, you know, go do whatever I want and not have to leave my like computer on, my PlayStation on or something and just go and get stuff done, you know, take breaks, go do whatever else. That, that That's just like best case scenario. But a big problem I know that's going to be happening for me is that they're going to be limiting self-revives to only three a game. And if you guys have ever watched me play any sort of zombies game, you know, I go down about like... 10 times a game but it ain't about how you go down it's about how you get back up and there is not going to be a whole lot of ways to get back up because i'm not entirely sure if quick revive in that game is going to have the ability like it does in this where when you go down you're gonna be able to kill a zombie and get back up from it because i'm also not sure yet if we have any of the like perk upgrades like we do here in cold war where you use your ethereum crystals to upgrade all your like skills your perks all that good stuff but in the blong that they put out it does look like there's going to be augments to perks that maybe you unlock through like just using the perks more often. I, I don't I don't entirely know how the that whole system is going to work. We're just going to have to wait and see. But it would be cool to have that back. Even though that it exists here, I hardly ever use it to get back up or at least use it successfully to get back up. Let's go ahead and buy some more perks. Ooh, give me dead shot. I need to play this game on a controller again. That shot's so clean. And I'm probably missing some other stuff that we're not getting in the game. But another notable one, or I guess somewhat notable, is uh, we're not getting Toxic Growth back, which is a really fun fuel upgrade, but it's very niche. Like, it, it has, like, little to no use in, like, Outbreak because of how big the map is. And it looks like Terminus is going to be pretty big as well. I feel like there'll still be some good spots on Terminus that we'd be able to use it. But I feel like that's more of, like, uh, you know, a, a fan favorite or, like, a very very niche pick that not a whole lot of people are going to be upset, upset about but there's gonna be like that vocal minority and i hope we do get more and more field upgrades and maybe some more perks as the game goes on because it was always fun to be like oh we're getting a new field upgrade oh let's figure out how this works oh let's figure out a cool strat with it like toxic growth was the mvp of leveling up in in onslaught containment placing that down on yuban is is one of the most broken strats and i'm pretty sure we're not even getting tesla storm in the next game I, I i could be wrong there's a whole lot of information they put out they literally called it like an information barrage and they weren't lying so they put out so much stuff about zombies it's ridiculous but while we're we're talking about field upgrades might as well use mine for the first time in this game get a little extra points there you go zombies eat it up oh we get our first assault wave coming back Ooh, what ammo mod do i go with though let's go with Shatter Blast. And let's also, love that you can do this, switch to Ring of Fire. And I'm not 100% sure if this is going to be a thing in BO6. My uh, my uh, reading comprehension is at like a third grade level. So I don't retain a whole lot of information. But I don't know if we're going to be able to swap field upgrades mid-game like we are here in Cold War. If we can't, I'm going to be a bit disappointed because I, like I, I said before, I like using some field upgrades early rounds, some in later rounds. Maybe I discover a strat or something 
mid game that I feel like might be better for a different field upgrade or something that I want to switch to. But the good news is we're going to be able to make all of our weapon builds and everything and apply blueprints to our weapons in game, kind of like how we are in Cold War. But I think for this game, you have to do it in advance. It's kind of similar to like BO3, where you can go through and make all your weapon builds first. And then whenever you grab it out of the box or a wall buy or like get it from a drop or something, it's going to have like your pre-made build there, which is huge. That's like one of my favorite features of Cold War, like being able to hop in, you know where a wall buy is. You can spawn in with a weapon that you want to use later game, like with the M79, where it's not always like guaranteed that you're going to get that. I don't think there was any wall buys for the M79 on any map, at least not to my knowledge. So you could spawn in with that, wait to use it in a high round, and then go up to uh, you know, a wall buy that you know, like the M16, or or grab some like Diamantes or something, and throw on your blueprint that you know is good and that you know works, and thug it out with that until you can get to a point where you're you're working on your strat. Let's also get this to pack two. Can I afford another perk? I forget the perk prices go up. We should probably get Mule Kick before we we go visit our boys up in Colonel's office. If my my goal today for playing is obviously taking out Orda. We got to see the boy, but then after that, I'm gonna just see how long I can survive in Colonel's without using an M79. That is definitely my crutch weapon of this game. It's just way too good. I also can't wait to play the game just to see how the movement's gonna work with the, the new Omni movement system. I'm gonna be coming up with like new and innovative ways to go down. It's gonna be awesome when I'm like running and diving to the side, shooting my gun and I end up just diving right off the map, diving right into a trap, you know, diving right into an elite that just beats the shit out of me. It's gonna be great. I'm gonna look fly as fuck when I take myself out. But what I really didn't get clarification on looking through the the whole blog they put out is if phd is going to be flopper or slider i think it did say flopper in the blog but i don't know if we're gonna get like cold war and still be able to slide since we do have the ability to dolphin dive and slide when it came to mw3 we only had the option to flop which i feel like i don't know isn't my favorite i really like the slide from cold war it's a lot of fun it's a really fun like movement technique on top of you leaving like a little trail of fire that does like I, I think it actually did some damage. I don't remember at this point, but I, I feel like it'd be a waste with the new Omni movement system to not be able to slide and flop. So let's go ahead and grab PhD, grab Mule Kick. Might as well grab Elemental. Let's go say hello to some old friends. What's going on, gentlemen? Good to see you. Long time no see. And another thing, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm asking for a lot here, but I just want a spot like this on each map, or at least on, on one map. Just to make the camo grind like very satisfying. This is like my all time favorite spot in zombies is sitting right here, popping my ring of fire and just lighting up zombies that come in a single file line. There's nothing more satisfying than seeing like all those numbers and everything pop up and seeing camos pop up. But speaking of all the numbers popping up, you know, there is times where I would like a little less HUD. And in BO6, at least in multiplayer, you have a fully customizable HUD where you can just move anything wherever you want. I don't think it's going to be that way for zombies. I think they're going to have a few HUD presets, but I've already seen a lot of people not too happy with how the HUD looks in the game. It's not very high on my list of concerns, but in the gameplay trailer, when they showed absolutely no HUD, sometimes I'd want to play like that. Like there is a glitch here in Cold War where if like you connect a mouse to a console, you can do kind of do some like menu stacking and get into game with absolutely no UI, which I just think looks beautiful. It's a lot better way of going and seeing, you know, the map without all these distractions. Like, I don't think I really need a mini map, at least after I, I like know the map. Like, I don't need to know where, you know, all the wall buys are and all the perks are just like at the, at the glance in my, my top left. I, I don't think we needed a compass, but that was toggleable here in Cold War. I think I probably just keep it. Actually, I probably keep just about everything on here besides the map in the, the little thing telling me what room I'm in. I might just make it a bit smaller so it's not as busy on the screen. And the metals are very satisfying sometimes, you know, seeing them pop up, but it does get a lot when you got like metals on the screen. It's showing you like an objective, like, oh, go defend the beach. And then you have all the points and hit markers popping up like that. There's just a lot going on on the screen. And sometimes I'd like less. I feel like it adds the atmosphere too, instead of like me having my Iron Man HUD where or Jarvis is telling me where everything's at. Sometimes less is more, you know? But when it comes to camo grinding, it, they said there's going to be four zombies mastery camos, which is absolutely beautiful. I love that they're still continuing putting a camo grind in this game. They did it with Modern for Zombies. They did it with Vanguard Zombies. I don't see why they wouldn't with BO6. I feel like that'd be a huge miss if they didn't. But good thing we don't live in a world where that's not happening. Because the Zombies camo grind is like one of the most satisfying camo grinds out there. I do 
kind of want them to take a few notes from Modern Warfare Zombies. And I know that sounds crazy, but I like how different some of the camo challenges were for like each gun. Not necessarily how easy they were, like, oh, go kill 50 armored zombies. You'd get that done in an instant round base. But like, just switch it up a little bit. So it's not like every gun you get 2,500 kills, 2,500 headshots, you know, this many jackrabbit kills. I want them to switch it up a bit. Because when I first hopped back on Cold War and I was making my AK class, I was scrolling through the camos, you know, to throw Dark Aether on here just to get another look at it after a while. And there's really not that many camos compared to what's in like MW3 and MW2. Like, although those camo systems are a lot easier, I like having new camos come out every time a new gun comes out. And you know, the, the mix up of challenges. It, it, it's a lot more fun when you know you're not doing the same thing every single time. And while we're on the topic of camos, uh, the snipers camos, everybody knows, or at least you've been watching for a bit. I hated doing the sniper camos here in Cold War because they're just so slow because you had to get 2,500 crits with each sniper. But if they go ahead and they have like the Modern Warfare zombie bullet penetration, like they have an MW3 where you can clat, I think the highest I clatted was maybe 15 zombies in one bullet. I would absolutely love it. It would, it would actually change metas for weapons. And I think snipers would be used a lot more because here in Cold War, you can literally only clat three zombies with a shot. And then it just, it maxes out there. Doesn't matter how much damage your sniper does. Doesn't matter what you build it for. It's just not going to do any more than three zombies at a time, which I think is a huge waste. But ADS thing right now just reminded me, it does look like we are going to get some more reticles and reticle grinds, which is awesome. I would love to have more things to grind out. But I feel like a lot of the reticles I have, you kind of just get them by using them. Like there wasn't a specific challenge for it. I don't know how many challenges you can have for reticles. I would like it to be something similar to Mono for 2019, where like each like optic you use kind of had like a mastery and you could get to the blue optic on it it almost felt like grinding another like mastery camo but just to have like a nice blue dot on a nice clean dot would be sweet just adding more and more stuff to grind for is like best case scenario because we're getting dark ops back which is a lot of fun i have almost every dark ops in this game besides the ones for dead ops because i'm not playing dead ops 12 hours a day for a year i think you need like a trillion points or some crazy number but the other dark ops that i don't have is the million kills still i'm at a cool 700,000 kills i think and it takes a long time to even get up to 700,000. i gotta do a lot of high rounding so i think my goal before bo6 comes out and i said this i think before mw3 came out that we're gonna try to get to a million kills on this account i want i want to stream a bit more cold war you know i i've had a lot of people come by my streams and everything and ask me like when are you playing Cold War again? And for a while, I just said, like, there's not a whole lot for me to do. I've gotten Dark Aether three times. I've done all the Easter eggs a bunch of times. I've gotten to round 100 on each map multiple times. But seeing some round-based gameplay in that trailer really got the itch going for me to hop back on some Cold War. And maybe even some some BO3. I'm a little out of my element in BO3. I don't, I don't know as much as I do in, in Cold War. So I think what I want to do, and, and don't hold me to this, because uh, I'm very scatterbrained and I might forget or I might run out of time to do these things. But I wanna do all the Easter eggs again for Cold War. Freshen up on the story as we're going into BO6. Maybe even play the campaign again to freshen up for BO6's campaign. And like I said before, I wanna try to get up to that million kills and get that last round based Dark Ops that I need. And that way I'm not so washed by the time BO6 comes out as well. I mean, I probably will be washed because a lot of the Cold War mechanics are at least the mechanics that I'm going to use to cheese my way up to a high round aren't going to be there. But at least it'll it'll give me a little more warmed up than Modern Warfare Zombies is. But speaking of Easter eggs, what's really cool is that uh, they said they're going to be banking Easter eggs a lot more tough in BO6. Like a lot more uh, difficult than they are here in Cold War. And Cold Wars aren't really difficult. There's like some annoying steps you got to do like here on Firebase trying to find all the mimics and get them into those traps like that can be pretty frustrating and like uh trying to get like the, the hologram monkey or or the ghost one and outbreak doing the legion easter egg can be a bit annoying but it's not like any of that stuff's really that hard to do or hard to figure out but from what they said is that not only are they making it more difficult but they're not going to be very guided for the first few weeks like after the eggs have been solved and they're out there for a while they said they're actually going to make a guided playlist of the maps where you can go and do the Easter eggs and the, the egg steps 
are like capped at certain rounds so you cannot progress rounds until you get the step done so that's gonna be really nice for a lot of people that are like newer to zombies and you know maybe they haven't played it a whole lot but they still want to see the story because i feel like that's a big disconnect with a lot of the older games like it feels very gatekeepy not only like in gameplay where you gotta go in you know do all these crazy easter eggs and watch like you know five hour long guides on each map to figure out what exactly to do everywhere but i feel like you know there's there's a good amount of the player base that tries to gatekeep things like yeah you know things are supposed to be hard but but you can also help out newer players i i feel like a lot of or not a lot i shouldn't say a lot let's not generalize here but there is a very vocal part of the zombies community that actively tries to stop newer people from coming in and enjoying the game because they weren't there and they didn't play it when they played it i know that ain't everybody but i i just remember how i felt when i first got into zombies here in cold war and then trying to play this and going to like some of the older games you know, a little bit of, a, of the reception that I felt. So it's nice that they're trying to make it like a, a fun, enjoyable experience for not only people that have been playing zombies for a long time, but trying new ways to get newer players in without affecting that experience for older players. I think that's really cool. I, I really like the idea of doing that. But in some of the ways they mentioned making it more difficult is that they tried to aim to make high rounding more difficult. Uh, the way they talked about it in the blog made it seem like zombies are going to group up a bit differently. Not like insanely different differently from like what we've seen in like older COD games, but there's going to be like a lot larger hordes, you know, more elites, more armored zombies, like the usual thing you'd see on higher rounds but also a lot of things that we use to get higher rounds here in cold war like the war machine or like the death machine things like that we're not gonna be getting those back it doesn't look like i think we're just getting like the rcxd and the sentry gun which i hope is a lot better because sentry gun is basically useless here in cold war but to replace crutches like the chopper gunner and the the cruise missile where you can just open that up and be safe we're actually getting a really cool one, the Mutant Injection, which allows you to become a mangler like this guy right here. But if I become a mangler, you know I'm not going to be getting stuck out of the map standing there holding up the whole round for everybody. Actually, I might. I might try to figure out a way to do that. But you actually just like take out this injection, put it into yourself, and you fully become a mangler for like a limited time. And from the clip that they showed of it, it looks so sick. Like it, it kind of reminds me of like Gears of War horde mode or it, it, it's some sort of mode where you just get to become the enemy types uh i think left for dead had a, had a mode like that as well where you could just be like the elite zombies and go out there and i think it might open the door for something really cool like grief mode I, i'm getting ahead of myself speculating here and maybe getting my hopes up a bit but i think something like that would be really cool and if we're not talking about like using you know manglers against our buddies or, or becoming a mangler against the zombies you can just partially become the mangler. It looks like if you take a mangler out, it has the chance to drop its arm as like a gun. So you can use its its cannon arm on all of the zombies. And it just looks so sick. Like I always wondered what it would be like to use that cannon arm right there. And we're actually gonna get the chance to do it. It almost looks sort of like a thunder gun. I mean, not identical to it, but it, it still seems like a lot of fun to use. I'm trying to think of anything else that I'm missing. Like I said, they, they dropped a lot of information. So I'm sorry if I'm missing something huge and I'm just like forgetting about it. I think the, the last thing I'll say, unless I, I remember something else, the, having a set crew is so sick. I, I think at least for Terminus, we're getting a set crew. I don't know how it's going to work on Liberty Falls or whatever other maps get added in later. But at least on Terminus, we're going to be having like Weaver, Maya, Dr. Gray, and Carver with Raptor 1 still coming back and hopefully finding a way to Axville if you want to be able to get out. And the story just looks so sick having like Rick Toffin come back and he's going to be like the main villain that we're looking for. Having Dr. Peck come back yeah, and him trying to help us out or whatever. I still feel like he's going to betray us again. You know, uh, it's it's not my favorite but i get to fuck with him a little bit more for another year I and mean, keep the rivalry going but i'm gonna be coming out on top i promise you that peck bastard oh and we got to round 30 and i don't have a ring of fire classic orda but it don't matter ring of fire or not i can still be your ass Orda. i've done it plenty of times even though it's been like shit i think maybe a year since i fought him ain't gonna make no difference he's gonna go down the same i'll bring that ass here start lighting them up oh we're already doing really good damage he's done he's cooked see you later pal just wait till i get this ring of fire then you're extra cooked let's throw a nade over here maybe that can get it done for me no we're close on order i'll be right with you sir just one more kill i think there we go now let's just wait till he starts prolapsing go ahead and show me that or i just want to take a peek just give me a glimpse of it i think he's shy 
It's been a while, huh? You don't just show that to anybody. There we go. Beautiful. Look at that. 4,000 damage a shot and his health is just getting drained. He's getting milked. He's getting sorted. See you later, Order. I don't even care if these zombies are hitting me. You're already gone. Still got plenty of ring of fire left, too. What a shame. Night night, you big bitch. Go ahead and fall over. Thank you. And I'll be seeing you later, buddy. Give me those rewards. Well, now the ord is taken care of. Uh, let's go turn on the rampage inducer, which is also something that's coming back on BO6. I don't know if it's going to work exactly the same as this. I, I think it's probably going to be pretty similar. But my one ask for it is that it doesn't end on round 55. Make it go, ex like, make it extend past health cap. Because the time it saves in between rounds is, is so nice when you're trying to high round. And it, it feels like the rounds go so slow after you get to like round 56 and above. So add that to my list of demands. But now we, we start our journey of trying to survive here in Colonel's office without an M79. And without a ring of fire, apparently. Okay, we're going to need the nade. There we go. Mimic. See you later. I forget how much bulky the elites are in this game the higher round you get to it's ridiculous especially the manglers so i feel like it's the opposite in modern warfare zombies where the manglers aren't that big of a deal in modern warfare and it's more the mimics you got to be more worried about but in this it, mimics almost feel like squishy and manglers just eat damage like it's nothing i think once we reach like round 36 is when it's going to start like turning on us where it's not going to be very possible to just sit here even with ring of fire too many elites spawn out of that window for us to survive i don't know if there's a single like bullet weapon you can use all the way up till like round 100 or at least till like health cap and, and while camping you gotta probably run around and abuse shatter blast for that maybe i should switch ammo mods the shatter blast is nice for the zombies but the zombies aren't the main issue right now i think we need napalm napalm will do a lot better against those manglers for us let's see if i can get it without going down if i was a betting man i'd say no so let's grab napalm and let's work on getting the hell out of here oh we did it sweet oh another thing while while we're on the topic of ammo mods i think bringing back like i mentioned before having some different kind of camo challenges but Bringing back the camo challenges from Modern Warfare 3, where it's like, oh, get kills with frost damage, get kills with fire damage, get kills with whatever. I, I feel like that would be a much welcome challenge, because I remember from my Dark Aether grinds, I think I'm going down here, shit. But from my Dark Aether grinds, I would literally only use Cryo Freeze, because that was the one ammo mod that wouldn't take away from my kills. And every other ammo would just extend the amount of time it took for me to get my camo on whatever weapon I was working on. The only thing that didn't was cryo and that wouldn't really slow anything down. Can I get a electric cherry here? Come on. There we go. I think we're down to just, nope, there's more than a few zombies left. Fuck it, we're still gonna go for our perks. Oh, I still don't have my gun legendary. I completely forgot about that. Uh, let's grab these. Hopefully survive. There we go. Probably should repair my armor. Let's do that. Let's get this to legendary. Man, we could have killed Orda even faster. But not bad for my first time back. It took me until around 33, 32 to go down. We still got it somewhat. I really don't feel like the game starts until at least round 30. Everything before that seems a, a bit easy. Yeah, I think this legendary is going to buy us at least two or three more rounds up here in Colonels. So I still think it's going to end very bad for us once it gets to like around 36. It ain't gonna be pretty. And I still don't understand why this mangler still spawns outside of here after so long. Like I get they stop support for some of these older games, you know, after their life cycle ends, but it felt like for a good year after Cold War came out that they were still adding in new stuff. Like we got the super Easter egg and uh, like a, maybe a few weapons or something. Honestly, I don't remember. But they, there was still support for this game. They're still doing stuff. There's got to be something where like if they were to fix that mangler spawn, it would fuck up something else. So they're just like, whatever, we'll leave it. It's a nice little uh, side Easter egg there. Or it was put there intentionally for people like me that just sit up in kernels forever. So we can actually like go out and touch grass because we don't even leave our, our little houses in game. We're on the fabled round 36 and so far so good. But we do have an insta kill and I don't have ammo. I swear my, my commentator's curse has never left. Uh, we still do have insta kill though. Let's try to slide into some zombies. Uh oh. This always goes wrong whenever I leave kernels. I'm an inside cat. I'm not made for the great outdoors. We still not have ammo though? Yeah, what the fuck? Where are my drops at? Where am I hug at? There's really none. 
All right, zombies come up here. I'm gonna eat a nade. Still none? Oh, there's a nuke. Now, can I get some, please? Any zombie's gonna drop any ammo at all. Cool. So much for a mule kick helping us out. Where's the ammo buy over here? There it is. Gimme. That's ridiculous. But it did take us until round 36 to run out of ammo. And you know what? Just for funsies, since we only got one zombie left, let's hit the box one time for the one time. Let's see if I got any good luck. No way. All right, well, maybe we do have a little bit of luck here. Let's get this bad boy pack a punch. And I absolutely love the design of the Ray K, but I hate using it. I hate having to switch ammo types constantly, shooting the orb, blowing it up. And that's the only way you can do the max damage on it. It's so annoying because even two of those didn't kill this mangler. Took three. And just to top it off, no offense to LeBron fans, it's not even good against Orta. Like, it don't do anything to him. I think we're in our groove. I think we got this. Actually, let's not talk. Last time I talked, it went bad for me. Switch modes. Blow it up. Thank you. Come on, we gotta have at least one more bout with Orta. But maybe I've been too harsh on the Ray K. It is really strong. And I am getting kind of annoyed with switching these ammo types or the firing mode. But we're surviving in kernels with it. I wonder what my highest round in kernels is. I wish there was a very specific stat for that. I wanna know how many hours of my life I've spent in this one room in this game. Oh, and here's Orta, of course, after I use my ring of fire. Bastard. Come on down here, you big bastard. My weapon's legendary now. There's no escape for you. Go ahead and break out of that crystal. And eat shit. Oh yeah, we're doing a thousand damage now compared to like, what, the 800 we were doing before? And that's pre-prolapse. That's a PP for those of you playing along at home. Let's throw a few nades. Maybe one more will be good. Depending on if there's actually zombies where I throw it at. Oh, look at that. 1600 damage now that he's closer. Uh, let's throw an aid right here. And that should give me a ring of fire. Nope. Bad mimic. We're missing the prolapse. Come on. Okay. Cashmere time. Get in there. Now we got a ring of fire. I think I'm going to save it though. But wait a second. Go ahead and prolapse again. See what happens. Try me. Go for it. Do it. Cashmere, protect me. Come on, I'm waiting. Open up. You're like a, a mega abomination. It's a lot less threatening. All right, fuck it. I'm just gonna kill you. You're done. Night, night, buddy. I was waiting for for the the glory shot, the money shot, but it don't matter. You're gone. You don't even need it. No prolapse required. I see you later, buddy. Little bitch. Don't you remember that next time? Wait, right, there's an X film. You know what? Maybe we should just take it. Maybe I'll save all my high rounding prowess for when we stream this game. Cause we already beat Orta's ass twice. And I feel like we've gone through just about everything I can think of for BO6. There's probably some stuff I'm, I'm missing out again, but uh, there'll be plenty of time to talk about BO6. We got a little bit. We got a, only a minute 30 to get out of here. Let's see if we can use this to get us out. We gotta make sure we kill everything here. I really hope they make X fills. I don't know about a little more difficult, but it'd be cool to see a combination of this x fill on top of like early season Modern Warfare zombie x fill where it's just an insane amount of zombies and maybe you don't have to eliminate all of them to get out, but maybe you have to fight through a whole horde to get to the x fill point. Because I saw a little clip in the trailer of like zombies hanging off of the helicopter and I think it'd be cool to try to get there before the zombies get you instead of like trying to kill a certain amount to get out. I don't know which one would be more difficult, but either way, we made it out. Made it safely. With only one down, I'm pretty sure. Let's take a peek at our stats. How many kills are we adding on? So we had 3,600 or 3, 364,000. See, I can't read. Points, 3,151 eliminations, 1,013 crits. No revives and only one down. Not bad for 45 rounds in my first time back in a bit. Now, how many zombie kills am I at now? 860,000. Okay, so I had more than I thought. We're only 140,000 off from getting to our million. And look how many kills I have with just the M79. 204,000 kills compared to my 30,000 with the Ray K. I have 18 days played on this. And that's just on this account. I still have two other accounts. Oh, and 469 games played? Sex? Anyways, I thought I'd share my thoughts on BO6 Zombies. It looks really fun and I'm really excited about it. 
I cannot wait for the game to come out and I'm probably gonna play a little bit of Cold War to warm up for it. But I'm gonna get out of here. Thank you guys for watching. I truly appreciate all your love and support and I will see you in the next one. Later.